is Maya McGinnis. She is president of the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget. Maya, good morning to you. Let's good morning. Hel help us out here. The Treasury Secretary asks, how good a deal can it be? Is that the most important question, or does it matter whether it's a $4 trillion deal or a $2 trillion deal? Is it just the case now that any deal is a good deal? Well, I think the most important thing always has been um, that we're going to actually lift the debt ceiling. And I feel like the tide has changed, that there's less question now that we're going to actually enter into a very dangerous period where we fail to do that. And I think both sides understand the importance. So the next question, of course, is what's going to be attached to that? And for a brief shining moment last week, it looked like they were really going to go for the big grand bargain, a debt, a debt reduction deal of over $4 trillion which is what we need to do. Anything short of that is going to fail to really stabilize the debt and put us on a sound fiscal path. Now, as they've backed off from that, we're back to looking at a smaller deal. It does matter, because the kind of deal that we're talking about is probably, almost certainly, going to focus on the parts of the budget that aren't really broken. We're going to be looking at domestic discretionary cuts, other mandatory cuts, but not focusing on the big problems, which are Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and revenues. And if we fail to address that now, we're just going to have to bring them all back to the table and do it all over again. And it might not reassure markets, which is one of the important factors in all of this. The deal has to be good enough to buy us some fiscal breathing room while the economy continues to recover and to let markets know that the political system can actually get this right. Well, ultimately, Maya, that, of course, will be a critical question. In the meantime, though, would markets not be encouraged uh, to see chances of some kind of an agreement being reached? And is it possible that a smaller deal makes raises the odds? Well, um, I have to say markets response confused me in many ways right now because continue, whenever there's risky a risky scenario, money still comes to the U.S. even when we're creating that risk. So I've actually been a bit surprised that markets have kind of been so relaxed about the environment that we have right now. And yes, I think they would be reassured to see that we get some deal done and that we're moving in the right direction. Certainly, they would be reassured to see that we lift the debt ceiling in a responsible way. Again, I think that's the most important thing. But we are not going to be able to fix this problem in a temporary way that doesn't actually address the broken parts of the budget for long. And as soon as you wake up the next morning and all over again after that deal, the problems are still there. We're still on an unsustainable path. Our deficits and debt are too big. You kind of wonder why we went through this terribly difficult political negotiation and we still haven't fixed the situation at the end of it. You don't want to have to do these deals over and over again. We might as well go big. Maya, speaking of right. political negotiation, what do you think about the president's strategy basically putting the ball back in the Republicans' court saying, OK, if you don't like my plan, come up with your own? Is this the, the right move right now? Well, I think the best sign is when we actually see less of what's happening and it's going on more quietly, that the sides are working out their deals. Because the harder piece for both of them, I think a number of people in that room could come to an agreement. The harder piece is going back to their various constituencies and selling the deal. Um, I think everybody has to be willing to put something on the table that they'll compromise on. And I think they need to start by agreeing you know, how big the deal is going to be. And again, when they were talking about $4 trillion, that was very encouraging. It's a little bit more troubling now because it's going to be just as hard to come up with this down payment or a deal of two, one and a half to two and a half trillion dollars, and it still won't be fixed. Uh, I do think that both Democrats and Republicans need to be willing to come together, show what they're willing to offer. And we know what the big parameters of any deal will be. We have to look at Social Security. You can't have Democrats saying we're not going to fix Social Security. We have to. Tax reform is going to have to be part of an ultimate deal. Maybe not if we focus on the short term on something smaller. But as soon as we get to really fixing this, tax reform has to be center of this. Ma there are many ways Maya. to do it that will be good for the economy. Um, Maya, I want to ask you about the personalities involved here because we saw John Boehner and the president lay out maybe the seeds of a four trillion dollar deal and now it feels like Eric Cantor may be the force pushing behind a smaller deal who's in charge of negotiating for the Republican Party uh, well that's a great question I mean the Republican Party does not speak with one voice right now and so there are a lot of different leaders of a lot of different factions and while there's a big negotiation that's going on between the principals here leader Boehner and President Obama and others of course there's negotiations behind the scenes within both of the parties and the one within the Republican Party is perhaps the most contentious because it's very important to get a deal it's very important to get a big deal uh, you would not expect Republicans to be push generally pushing for a smaller deal 
However, this revenue issue is such a big one for the Republicans. And instead of focusing on all the important ways that we could actually reform the tax code, make it better, make it simpler, bring rates down, and help close the fiscal gap, there's still kind of this tug of war about what does a tax increase mean? We're fighting over semantics. And so there's a lot going on behind the scenes there. There are a lot of different people who are weighing in heavily and have quite a bit of influence. Maya, you said that uh, earlier that we don't want to do these deals over and over again, but is it possible that is maybe the one thing the Republicans do agree on, that this ought to be an issue for the 2012 election because they know how much pressure they can put on the president and the Democratic Party over the issue of spending and revenue? Uh, they perhaps think that. I think there are probably some Democrats who'd rather push it off till after the election. I regularly find myself at odds with sort of political strategists in that I just think that this would be win-win for everybody in terms of who's in power right now because the country knows we need to get a deal and they would also like to see the fighting end and moving forward on a deal. But I am sure that there are plenty of people who say, let's fight this out in the election. There's a huge risk there, though. Okay. What will happen in the election could be we demagogue these issues Maya, instead of moving forward. We have to leave it there. We thank you so much. Okay. Maya McGinnis joining us there, president of the Committee for a Responsible Budget.